Offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Dave Patno. We'll just open it right up for questions for Coach Patton. Okay. I'm just curious, kind of, you now have about half a season, a little more than that, in the books. How do you feel like the evolution of the offense has been in, in terms of this transformation and what you're trying to do? And we'll get there. Kind of where, <laughs> what you like and what you, what you still think is a kind of work in progress. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously by the numbers, we ran the ball really well last week. And uh, so I think our run game has been good. I think we're really multiple in our run game. I think there's a lot of things that they have to defend when you put the tape on, whether it's the, you know, JP and the running backs running the ball out of a, you know, just a straight run look. Uh, all the different formations that we're giving, different motions. You know, the ability of James to pull the ball and be a viable weapon pulling the ball. Uh, really put you know Miami into some uh, disadvantages when they were trying to you know defend some of the run game. I think the option game has been good. Had a huge pickup on on a fourth down where we ran speed option and had a really good play there. So there's a lot of different things that they have to defend. I think the O line has done a really nice job of, of understanding you know blocking angles and who they're blocking. And uh, and then I think you still have to add some of the RPO game in there. Um, you know, we had a few of them wired up against Miami on Saturday. We missed them early, um, and I think that James has to just get more comfortable throwing those RPOs. I think we had a lot of success handing it off, so he was like, "Hey, you know, I'm just going to keep giving the ball to these guys. You know, I don't need to throw the ball out there." Uh, but you know, there was a few uh, situations in the middle of that game where he just took off and ran it. Um, he's electric when he runs the ball. So there's a lot of different variables there in the run game. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, you know, uh, between our offensive staff, that we do a tremendous job of scheming up the run. You know, Brent spends a, a ton of time, um, you know, really dissecting everything in the run game and, you know, putting all the different packages together. So, you know, it's been a really good collective effort there. I think, you know, we're still inconsistent throwing the ball. Uh, we have not been hearing the ball out. You know, I, I think we would like to be able to hear the ball out a little bit more. But, you know, in a lot of situations, we're playing. Uh, you know, run offense, play action off of it, throwing the ball quick, getting the ball out of their hands. Across the board, we have to do a better job of executing in the pass game, throwing the ball down the field, uh, taking the shots when they're there. Uh, like we did on Saturday, we threw one. Amari made an unbelievable catch against Miami. And, uh, but we have to be more consistent being able to do that. You know, you're going to run into some teams in some weeks where it's going to be a little bit tougher running the ball. Um, with this, you know, either uh, schematically or, or, you know, by the guys that we're playing, it's going to be a little bit tougher to run the ball, and you've got to be able to take advantage if they're going to play some man coverage, uh, throw the ball down the field and make some plays. And, you know, really what we talked about in the past game with those guys all of that Miami week was, you know, playmakers make plays. Man. If, you, if you get the ball and you're in a situation to make a play, you got to win your one-on-one -on -one battles. And I thought we did a pretty good job of that. But, you know, I think we have to be more consistent being able to throw the ball on throw downs and come up with it. The last bye week, you kind of talked about how the focus of the week was really stepping back and stripping everything down and kind of going back to the basics of installing fundamentals. How did this bye week differ considering kind of the steps that have been made since then? I think similar, except we didn't go all the way back. You know, we kind of went halfway back. And, uh, you know, the things that we were doing well, you know, just kind of kept exp expanding the packages of the things that we're doing well. Um, and, you know, last week was more about the younger guys and the development um, of the younger guys. You know, some of the older guys were just banged up and, you know, we just said, hey, you're going to come out here and you're going to have your spider pads on and you're going to run around and we're not going to bang you around a whole lot and sit in the meetings, do the things that you need to do, you know, to stay focused mentally, uh, but really, you know, try to get healthy, rehab, you know, work out, you know, let's not lose our strength, let's keep our bodies right. Um, so that was a big piece of it, and, and the development piece for the younger guys was really, really good. Um, and then more just more film work and more mental pieces to try to take the load off of them physically. Um, and then, you know, we talked about uh, when we came back, like, you know, one of the reasons why uh, we were successful in that overtime was when we felt that the game was in the balance, we went and took the game. And it was, there was a, a little bit of a sense of desperation and a sense of, we, you know, we have this and we can go get this win. And we have to find that again. You know, you can't be complacent because you got a win and then you had an off week and then you just think you've arrived, right? It's right, right back to work. Great work day today. Um, and now we're, you know, back ramped up in, into game week. And 
Coach Collins did a tremendous job of managing, you know, the, the piece of let's get better, let's you know stay sharp with our older guys, but let's not bang around, let's get the young guys to go. You, you mentioned about you know getting the ball out quickly when you're playing a team like Pitt, who has a reputation for getting a lot of sacks. Is, is that something you're looking for from James this week? I think it's we're looking for that every week. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, these guys defensively are really, really good. They're in the top 15 in the country for a reason. Uh, they have really good personnel. Schematically, they are very challenging. Uh, they are very stout. They're in the right gap on every play. They're never caught out of a gap. Uh, they're very sound. They will run blitz you on first and second down. So you know they're gonna they're gonna push you out of the pocket, uh, and they're gonna make it such that they're always gonna try to outnumber you in the run game. So you know the, the early run down runs, we're gonna have to be patient. You're gonna have to pound the ball in there, um, and you're gonna have to be patient. You're gonna have to take the three, four, two, three, four, two yard runs, and then eventually JP's gonna break one, or James is gonna pull one, and we're gonna break one. But that being said, if you're if you're trying to Overload the run game. You have to be able to get the ball out, throw quick game, throw screens, throw nakeds, and take some shots. Um, and it's got to be a good mix of both, and that's what we've tried to be uh, overall. And you know, when you watch this on third down against Miami, we threw a lot of quick game. So the ball, you know, we threw a you know a little stick route to Tobias, and he whipped it around and got a first down. We threw one in the flat for a first down. We ran it on third and four, third and five, uh, which was really good for us. So it's got to be a combination of all of that stuff. We're just, you know, we're still developing as a pass protection group. Um, and when you break them down from a pass game perspective, you do not want to be a third long against Pitt because it is a bee's nest of dudes running around. Um, and they have a very, very, very good uh, third down pass package. Uh, third and long, you, you got to stay out of it. Um, and, you know, you have to have a few simple ways to be able to attack it uh, because if you try to block everything that they bring, you won't block anything. So you have to have a few things that you can do really, really well and that will have a few, a few things that will sleep. Uh, two questions. One, um, kind of given what you're saying and I'm, you know, what Andrew's saying about you know, how great it was to have you know, the offense control the ball for 10 minutes for her, is that kind of where you're going? And second, I have a question for you about Jordan uh, makes just particularly his, his ability, his vision, and his ability to break tackles. Mm -hmm. Really, really strong. I'd be curious to hear your comments. About it. Yeah, I think I think you know you have to play you know good team uh, football, and uh, the greatest part about what we did against Miami was we were able to control the clock, uh, made a concerted effort to run the ball out of a multitude of different looks. It wasn't just, hey, we're going to line up in two tight ends and just try to pound the ball down your neck, right? I mean, we gave the ball to, to Mason, um, and he had all the auxiliary runs off of that. And, you know, Jemais played well, and Jerry played well. So, you know, we have a good group of those guys. Uh, but in the same respect, you know, we spread people out, and, and we were bringing, you know, Tobias in motion and him in speed sweep and, you know, trying to be spread, two tight ends, two backs, giving them different looks. Um, and then, you know, take your shots off of them. And, and, and you know, I think that is a good recipe. Um, and you have to be able to establish the run no matter what. You know, and we've talked in the past, I mean, historically, we've been a 50-50 run pass team. Um, and, you know, with this group of dudes, that's, that's been a good, a good form of the force. When we've been able to establish the run, get the ball downhill, um, and make people put extra guys in the box to be able to stop the run, then it gives you some opportunities to get into one-on-one -on -one one-on-one uh, -on -one situation. Against Miami, they were they were playing a lot softer coverage. They were playing two high safeties, and they were not, you know, necessarily overloading the box every play, uh, so that they gave us a few more run looks than you know than some some teams have. Um, uh, and then JP in general is awesome. He's awesome. I mean, <laughs> thank God we have him. Um, he makes me look really good. You know, when I call a run on third and five, he makes three guys mess. And you know, uh, you know, the TV guys are like, "Oh, what a call!" You know, it's like, you know the running it on third down. You know, it's like, you know, he's our best guy. Let's give it to him. Um, 
And then I think the other thing that's, that's you know, sometimes hidden is Jeff does a really good job of saying, hey, you have four downs here, you have three downs here, we're gonna punt it, <coughs> let's run it here, you got, you know, so once we get on their side of the field, there's great communication going on by the staff of saying, okay, you can run the ball here because on fourth down, if we could get it to this, we're going for it, all right? Or, hey, you know, hand the ball off, we'll punt them in, you know, or, hey, we're going for it here, we need it, you know, whatever, so. A lot of the calls are based on that, and, and being able to give JP the ball in those situations, uh, you know, is, is certainly a benefit. And then when we got in the overtime, we were giving him the ball, you know. Um, and he, I you know I saw, I saw some crazy statistics online at some point, but he just makes people miss. He has an uncanny ability to see people coming out of his peripheral vision, and then just kind of slide by a guy. You know, he's not like a little scooter type of guy that's like, a, you know, just makes people miss. He's like, whoa but he knows how to move his body, he knows how to hit the ball, and the thing that he's done better over the last, like, maybe even three weeks, is he, he's finishing with his pads going towards the goal line on every play, and that's something that Deshard does a tremendous job with all of those backs of, you know, we never finish going sideways, we finish with our pads going towards the goal line, and that's how you break tackles, right? You split people, you get your pads down, and, you know, you make them arm tackle you, and then you break the arm tackles instead of trying to jump around tackles and things like that. So the group um, has done a really good job with that. JP just has a natural fit for that. Anything else for Coach Patton? We'll take two more for Tori and Rob. Coach Collins is talking about the quarterback being servant leaders. Can you kind of speak to what it is that you kind of teach them in regards to that and what more examples are of that? Mm -hmm. I think one of the cool examples that Coach Collins has talked a lot about to our guys, to the quarterback specifically, is Dak Prescott. And, you know, he was the first guy in the building. He was the last guy to leave. Nothing was ever anybody else's fault. If something went wrong, he would say, hey, that's my bad. I got it. I got it. It was probably somebody else's fault. But he was never going to put it on anybody else. He was never going to point a finger at anybody else. He was never going to say, well, the old line didn't do this or the White House didn't do that or, you know, the running back didn't do that. It was like, everything is my responsibility. Everything, I'm, the, I'm the guy that's got to leave this thing. And so when you get that point, now people will look at you as a calming influence and you say, look, you got this thing. Um, and really, the thing that I think has stood out for really all the guys, but you know, specifically James, because he's been playing the majority of the snaps, is that his maturity level off the field and all of the other things outside of football is really, is really amazing. I mean, his, his, what he's done in the classroom is awesome. His understanding of who he is and who he wants to become is great. Um, he's, he's, he's more comfortable in his own skin. He's more comfortable being out there as a guy and just, you know, he has a natural jovial personality and he's a natural born guy to, you know, he's not afraid to stand in front of the group, but it's, you know, it's, it's also to the point of, look, it's not about me, it's about we. And I have to be able to do my part uh, for the benefit of what we're doing. Um, but when, if you're a leader and you put your guys first, you know, everybody first before you, that's when true leadership happens. It's not about, hey, I scored a touchdown and I'm standing on top of the, on top of the table waving the, wave the top. You know, it's like, all right, let's just go to the next play. Hey, great, great block. Or if something goes wrong, it's okay. Let's, you know, get it back together and we're going to get it coached up. And, and so there's a more of a level of, you know, still a level of excitement because he's still a young dude but a level of calmness and confidence that's starting to creep over that whole group. Um, and the more they see things and the more they develop, and the more that will develop. Right, last one. Pitts, uh, strong safety and free safety are one, two on the team in tackles. Is that a result of their skill set or what they try to do schematically? Both, both. The, the boundary safety is really, really athletic dude and they wire everything for him to make tackles. Uh, so the way that they play defense, the, the short side, the short side safety is basically a linebacker. Um, two inside linebackers, they don't really care if you're throwing it. They're going to come downhill and you know try to create chaos. Uh, if they see you pass read, they'll drop out. But that backside safety, they're they're scheming things to get him into the run fits. Um, and the same thing with the outside linebacker to the field, you know, so the, the, the overhang linebacker to the field kind of cheats in the box and the weak side safety kind of cheats in the box. So you have the six guys in the box plus those two really playing run. So it's always an eight man fit 
you know. Um, and then that, that backside safety, they blitz him a lot. So he's not only just coming down into the run fit, they're bringing the linebacker, blowing up the, you know, blowing up the run fits and then having him stack in behind them. So a lot of times you'll, you'll see him on the backside. He's only eight or nine yards deep. So people are trying to throw over their heads and read them and all, you know, all of those type of things. Um, but he's not just going to be back there at 18 or 20 yards hanging out. He's going to be down in the mix on run downs. Um, conversely, the field guy, because they pack the box, everybody's trying to get the ball on the edge somehow. Um, so he has to rally and make plays with, you know, whether it's a run or a pass, uh, balls on the edge. So he gets a lot of opportunities to make tackles. The one thing about this group is they are very, very sure tackling the team. The two safeties, the reason that they are where they are is because they rapid tackle. You know, it's, they're very difficult to, you know, just shake and, and make that kid miss. You may make a miss, but he's going to get you on the ground for the most part. Uh, so it's going to be a great challenge. You guys are really, really good. It's going to be a fun day. Thank you so much, Pat. Thanks, guys.